Hello and welcome to this video, in which we're going to try and find the best budget-friendly stubby impact wrench. The first contender in today's video is this 12 volt impact wrench from Lux Tools. This is a brand sold at Obi, and I picked this one up from their German online store for 30 euros. So let's see what exactly you get for your 30 euros. And don't worry, I'll leave a link to all the tools in the video description. First of all, you get a very simple yet sturdy 2 amp charger. It's definitely not the fastest charger in the world, but it will fully charge the included 4 amp hour battery in about 2 hours, which I think is more than acceptable at this price point. You also get 4 sockets in the box, and if I'm honest, they're nothing special. They're basic chrome vanadium sockets, and while they might get the job done, you'll quickly realize that using some proper thick walled impact sockets lets this thing perform a lot better. And finally, this is the star of the show, the Lux Tools 12 volt impact wrench itself. It does look somewhat like a first gen Milwaukee M12 stubby, just at about one tenth of the price. It has two reverse modes, both full power, with one featuring an auto stop. In forward, you get three power modes, and it makes all the right noises. And because of that, first of all, I want to answer a question I got on Instagram. Can I remove the wheel bolts from a broken down Peugeot? Well, unlike the Peugeot, this thing is actually good for something. But let's take it a step further and put it up against this, the definitive cheap stubby impact wrench, which is of course the Parkside Performance 12 volt impact wrench. And yes, this is the newest model. This one claims to have up to 350 newton meters of breakaway torque, which is 100 newton meters more than what the Lux tool claims. But that's not all, because I also went on AliExpress and ordered this thing from one van. This is a 16 volt impact wrench, which claims to have up to 500 newton meters. I ordered it with a single battery and a charger, and I immediately have to complain about the laptop style charger, which, as you'd expect, takes forever to fully charge the battery. Still, it's a full working set. And uh, because of some discount coupons, I pay less than 40 euros for it. It has a combination anvil, meaning it takes both half inch sockets and quarter inch hex bits. And just like the Lux tools, it has three forward modes and the same two reverse modes. As for the park side, it comes as a bare tool, so no battery or charger included. But you do get the same kind of four sockets as in the Lux tools set. Now, when it comes to power, and uh, because I don't want any complaints from the park side fans among you, I'm giving it the best chance possible with this fully charged 5 amp hour high power battery. It has 4 settings in both forward and reverse, and this is the 2025 model made by Grizzly Tools. The Lux Tools is made for Obi by, well, I guess Obi, and the one van has absolutely nothing on it to suggest anything about the brand or, well, itself. So that's it then. These are the 3 cheapest stubby style impact wrenches I could find, and now I guess it's time to test them. First, let's do the basic 120 newton meter breakaway test, because that's what most of your wheel bolts should be set to. This is pretty much an ideal case scenario, but it's a good warm up for these tools. So let's see what's what. And by the way, from this point on, all tools are set to their maximum power and all batteries are fresh off the charger. That's a good showing for the park side. Now let's retort the nuts and it's time to see what the tool from AliExpress can do. Sure, it's a 16 volt tool, but it's still compact and it's running a 2 amp hour battery, so I think it's fair enough to include it in this video. And finally, let's see what the 30 euro Lux tool stubby can do. I mean, at this price, it would be perfectly acceptable if it was down on power as long as it could handle some basic suspension or engine work. But no, it's actually the best performer so far. I call that a win. Not that this difference in performance really means anything. This isn't Formula 1. A second or two doesn't really matter, does it? But let's increase the demand and try them again at 200 newton meters. This should be no problem at all for the Parkside Performance Impact Wrench, considering it claims up to 350 newton meters of breakaway torque. And it should be child's play for the One Van 2, since that one claims up to 500 newton meters of breakaway torque which is actually hard to believe considering the tiny battery it comes with. And well with that done, let's see what the least powerful tool here can achieve. Now things are getting interesting aren't they? 
the gap is starting to open up, and even I wasn't expecting this. So then, let's keep going, shall we? The next test is at 250 newton meters, which is the maximum rated breakaway torque for the lock stool stubby. Now, now bear in mind that these threads are clean, and this isn't like removing a lug nut that's seized onto a wheel. But even so, I still find this pretty impressive for a 30 euro impact wrench. Next up, let's see the AliExpress tool in action. And I think the pressure might be getting to it, because even on the first nut, it's starting to fall behind. Granted, it's using a tiny 2 amp hour battery, but since there are no larger capacity options available, that's what it's going to be tested with. It takes some time, but it does get there in the end. Now, how about that park side? I have complained about the quality of these 2025 models, but the one I'm using here is the absolute best example I could find. And if you remember, I did an entire series on these. And some of them couldn't even remove bolts tightened to 200 or even 150 newton meters. And if you're interested in that, I'll link that video in the description. That final nut seems to be the hardest one for all of them, especially for the park side, which, despite having the largest capacity battery, really starts to struggle there. Still, it does manage to remove all three nuts, but the times at the finish line are just so good for one tool and so bad for another. That honestly starts to look a bit, well, depressing, doesn't it? And now we're on to the final hurdle of this test, the 300 Nm breakaway test. And at this point, the Luxor Stubby should fail, and the other two should take the lead, right? Well, you might want to keep watching. I'm starting off with the one van, which may already be at a disadvantage compared to the other two due to its smaller battery capacity. And I do think that plays a role here. If they ever make a 4 amp hour battery for this thing, I think it would perform much better and for a lot longer. But as things stand, the tiny battery it comes with really does not enjoy life at full power demand. And considering that charging it takes a long time, that's definitely something to keep in mind. The bed tool itself actually looks pretty decent so far, but the battery is letting it down badly. Next up, for no particular reason, I went with the park side. I wasn't expecting things to unfold like this. I literally just grabbed whichever tool was closest to me and started filming. And in this case, it was the park side. Keep in mind, this thing was using the largest capacity park side 12 volt battery, and park side claims it should be able to deliver up to 350 newton meters of breakaway torque with this particular battery. I do think I gave it a very fair shot on the first nut. I just let it work there for more than 30 seconds and it still failed to undo it. At that point, I no longer expected to remove the other nuts, but I still gave it a chance, with over 10 seconds per nut. And in the end, none of them moved. Now, I deliberately didn't stop the camera or cut the footage here, because I wanted to try the Lux Tools impact wrench on the exact same nuts, without changing anything or being accused of anything. That's also why I keep the socket in view while switching tools just to keep the angry comments to a minimum. Now yes, you could argue that the park side loosened them for the blue tool, so I decided to talk everything back down to 300 newton meters and repeat the test using only the Lux tool stubby. And come on, you have to applaud that. It cost me 30 euros for the full kit, and I did that. On top of that, it has a feature where it slows down once the nut breaks free, which is actually really nice. Just look at the final times and tell me you're not at least a little bit impressed by this thing. Because I'll be honest, I bought it as a joke, but it turns out this thing might actually be the real deal. What I decided to do next was to use the Lux Tools, well, tool, to tighten these nuts on its maximum setting and then see if the other tools could break them free. I really didn't spend that long on each nut, considering that this tool should probably be weaker when it comes to tightening. The park side really should be able to remove these nuts without any trouble, right? But, well, no, that wasn't the case. So, well, I reached over and grabbed the AliExpress tool. The footage isn't cut, so you can see everything for yourself.
and well, the one van managed to remove all three nuts without a problem. Since I already had the one van at hand, I switched it into forward, selected mode 3, which should be its highest power setting, and hammered on the three nuts for a couple of seconds each. With that done, I grabbed the Lux Tool Stubby because I wanted to see how it would cope against the AliExpress tool, and in the end, it didn't even break a sweat. After that, I reached over for the Park side, which again, despite nearly 30 seconds of effort, failed to break the nut tree. So finally, I reached for the Blue Tool again, and I think you get the idea by now. Now, Fresh nuts and bolts are one thing, but how about a real world test on some scrap? I suspect these wheels haven't been removed in ages, and I seriously doubt anyone used a torque wrench when installing these bolts. So, let's see if the Luxtool Stubby can remove everything I ask it to. Well, that was a bit too easy, wasn't it? So, let's try another wheel, shall we? Okay, this is a proper real world test now because whether we like to admit it or not, some people install wheel bolts using pneumatic impact wrenches at full blast, and that's when things get interesting. So, there you have it. There are some extreme situations where this tool does get overwhelmed, and if you want to hold that against it, that's, I guess, fair enough. But for me, at this price, this thing is starting to look like the absolute bargain of the century. And the only thing left to do now is to open this up as well as the other tools and see if the build quality is actually any good. I'll start off with the insides of the park side as a reference point and then we can get a better idea of where the others stand. The heatsink on the park side isn't particularly large and that might explain some of the control board issues people have been seeing. But my biggest problem with these 2025 Parkside models is actually the hammer and anvil assembly. The fit and finish here is just, well, bad. The hammer and anvil rarely align properly, and while this one actually looked pretty good when I opened it up before filming, it seems like the hammer took some damage during testing. And so it no longer strikes the anvil evenly on both sides, which in the end results in a massive loss of power. In forward, it still looks somewhat acceptable, but in reverse, it's really not great. Now, when it comes to rotor size, the park side and the Lux tools are almost identical. The same goes for the status, although the Lux tools might have a slight edge there. But just look at the heat sink on the Lux tools. It covers the entire length of the control board, which I honestly did not expect to see on a tool at this price. And it doesn't stop there, because when I try to remove the front casing, I realize it's actually held to the body with an additional screw. So it really does look like someone made an effort to build a proper tool here. On top of that, take a look at this. It appears they're using a seal between the gearbox and the rotor, which prevents grease from the front casing migrating into the electronics. Again, bonus points to Obi. Nicely done. And finally, if you look at the hammer and anvil assembly, you can clearly see how much better the alignment is compared to the park side. These two are honestly worlds apart. With everything else being equal, it's really no surprise there's such a big difference in performance. Now, on to the one van. This one appears to have a larger rotor and stator than the other two, and the heatsink is about the same size as the park sides. And the control board is covered in some kind of resin. As for the front casing, everything in here looks well, well made. The parts line up properly, and the anvil has a large o-ring, and there's a generous amount of grease inside. Removing the plastic at the back of the front casing also reveals a very large bearing along with three planetary gears, just like the park side. The Lux Tools, on the other hand, uses two planetary gears, and that feels like a more cost-driven solution, and ideally, I would have liked to see three, but, you know, you can't have everything. Even so, at €30 Euros for the complete Lux Tools Stubby Impact Wrench Kit, I don't think we can reasonably ask for more. So for me, this is the absolute highlight of this video, and I can confidently recommend it for its price. As for the other two, feel free to let me know which one you prefer in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching, I hope you found the video interesting, and I'm looking forward to reading your thoughts. And if it's not too much trouble, make sure to like, subscribe, and all that YouTube stuff.